Hey guys, what's up? I'm Matt, and we're gonna be doing some electrical troubleshooting on the DRZ today. Now this is my Suzuki DRZ. I was riding it home yesterday from the fire station. I had it there for a couple of days while I had one of our engines here to work on. And, you know, I've got this voltmeter right here. My voltage is normally in the like 13 and a half to 14 volt range. As I was riding, the voltage started dropping down. I got down, you know, in, uh, in the 12s. And then after a few more minutes, it was in the high 11s. And that's not good. It means that my alternator is not charging the battery uh, as the motorcycle's running. And if I let that continue, eventually this thing is gonna leave me stranded somewhere. So let me show you what's going on here. Uh, as we're sitting here with the motorcycle off, we're reading at about 12 volts and that's a fully charged battery. I did put it back on the battery tender. So you can see there, right after I started the DRZ, the voltage just hung out at 11.9 volts. Shouldn't be doing that. Uh, it should be rising up to, you know, the mid 13s of 14 volts within, you know, seconds of starting it on a fully charged battery. The way that it should work, uh, like on the V-Strom here. So we're 11.3, 11.5. If that's the way it should work, as soon as I start the bike, it should come right up to a nominal voltage and stay there. And that's not happening on the DRZ, so we need to figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna take just 30 seconds here to talk about uh, the electrical system in the motorcycle. Uh, I have not worked on this before, so I really don't know what's wrong, but charging systems in motorcycles are pretty simple. So components, we've got our stator, which is uh, stationary copper windings. Uh, we've got a rotor, which is a flywheel. It's got magnets on it, and it spins those magnets really fast past the copper windings in the stator, and that induces a voltage and current. That comes up here to our regulator rectifier. Now, the voltage and current that's coming out of the stator is going to be a higher AC voltage at a frequency that varies with engine RPM. I don't really know what voltage this produces, uh, You know, probably on the order of 30, 40 volts, something like that. Uh, obviously that's too high for our motorcycle's electrical system and it's AC, which we can't use here. So our regulator rectifier right here takes that higher AC voltage, it rectifies it, converts it into a DC voltage, and then it regulates it down to about 14 volts. And uh, that's safe for all the components in the electrical system in the motorcycle. And then of course we got our battery here. Uh, the battery is just an energy storage reservoir you can think of, uh, think of it that way. It, it's not really being used when the motorcycle's running. The charging uh, system takes care of all the motorcycle's electrical loads when the engine's running and a little bit extra to recharge the battery, which is presumably only used when you first start the motorcycle. Now, in my case, uh, because I'm seeing this voltage drop down, what's happening is that the charging system is not producing adequate power to cover all the motorcycle's electrical loads and recharge the battery. So we're actually using power out of the battery when we're riding and eventually what's gonna happen is the battery will get depleted enough to where the starter won't turn the engine over, or if it's a long ride, the battery may drop down low enough to where my lights quit and uh, the ignition system quits, the motorcycle dies, and it's gonna leave me stranded somewhere. So um, yeah, let's dive into it. All right, I'm just gonna kind of work my way back here. Uh, like I said, I haven't done any troubleshooting yet, but first thing we're gonna do is fire the bike up and then just back probe the uh, stator connections that go into our regulator rectifier. And I don't really know exactly what voltage I'm looking for, but like I said, it should be a, f a fairly high AC voltage, you know, 30, 40, 50 volts, something like that. And then we're gonna back probe the connector that comes out of the regulator rectifier and uh, see if power is getting from there to the battery. Now, like I said, I noticed the voltage bouncing around as the bike was jarring, and so I think I'm gonna find a loose connection or a chafed wire or something like that. Maybe the stator will be bad, maybe a wire's broken inside of that, so. All right, just kind of following wires here. These uh, yellow wires come from our stator and uh, this side of the connector goes into our regulator rectifier. This connector here comes out of the regulator rectifier and sends power back to our battery. I'm gonna use some um, probes here and just probe these wires with the engine running and just see what kind of voltage we're getting out of it. Hey guys, 
guys uh, got kind of lucky here. No more troubleshooting needed. <laughs> After I checked the voltage coming from the stator, I went to go probe the uh, connector that goes back to the battery and check this out. So I'm just going to move this thing around right here. Look at my voltage up here. So as I move that connector around, the, the bike's voltage is going up and down. Uh, something has failed inside this connector. I don't know if it's a broken wire, broken connector. It's more than likely is just corrosion. Uh, that thing probably has to pass several amps and it's probably, you know, it's probably just developed some corrosion on some of the pins. So we're gonna take it apart, check it out. The connector body is warm. So that's definitely our culprit here. Yeah, um, there's some corrosion on these pins here. They are worn. Same thing inside of here. Uh, now I could certainly bypass this or put a new connector in here, but I like to leave everything factory when I can. So I am going to use a pin removal tool to pop these out of here and then I'm gonna sand them down and uh, just crimp down a little bit on these uh, female connectors. And uh, we'll see if that does it for us. It's going to be a little difficult to get detail on the camera here, but on this female side, we're just going to pop this retainer out here. Just like that. Oh, and I can see, yeah. Um, try and get some detail there. Look at all this green crusty stuff that's in here. And this is definitely our issue. All right, guys, well, I've got this connector pulled apart. Uh, obviously, I'm being a little careful because I haven't disconnected the battery not to short these out, but I had all this green crusty crap kind of come out of there when I pulled it apart. Uh, these female terminals here have a lot of corrosion inside of them and it's really difficult to clean something this small down inside where it really needs it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of press down on it, spray some contact cleaner on there, put some corrosion X in there, etc, etc. I'm also going to deep end this side and clean these uh, male terminals as well. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm kind of just throwing a band-aid on it by doing that. I know that some people completely bypass this connector. Uh, totally fine, I guess I don't have a problem with that. I, I just, if I can, I'd prefer to leave all of this stuff in place. So I'm gonna head to the computer, see if I can figure out what kind of connector this is and order a new one. And then when that stuff shows up, I will tear this thing back apart and crimp some new terminals on there and press them into the housing. All right, well, I'm usually pretty good at uh, digging up uh, manufacturers and types of connectors online, but this one took me a while. Uh, the manufacturer, the design of this, it's called Furukawa. Um, I don't remember what the series is or anything, but I actually couldn't find any domestic sources for these, uh, at least not for the male side. Apparently the female side is used on some Ford Focus models uh, coil and plug ignition system. So I could find like female pre-built harnesses so they were all put together but didn't have the individual components but i couldn't find the male side uh, and or individual components so i ended up having to order a set from overseas probably going to take a month to get here but we'll finish cleaning this up uh, it'll get me by for the month until those parts show up once i do i'll tear it back apart and replace them well a few days have passed i finally i finally got the uh, connectors to show up as i mentioned earlier these are for uh I think a Ford Fiesta coil on plug. Uh, anyway, I ordered these from Amazon. They were pretty inexpensive. It was like six bucks or something for eight of these. Uh, they do fit quite nicely. I'll pull one of these things out here. They fit nice and snug right here on this connector. However, um, these are, I think, probably 16 or 18 gauge wire going in there. And I really don't want to you know, cut and splice this end onto these right here. I think what I'm gonna do is disassemble one of these connectors right here. Basically just salvage the uh, connectors from inside of it and crimp it onto the wires uh, on the bike and then put the old connector back on there. I really would have liked to have actually just gotten new components and put them on there, but I, I really couldn't find any sources in the United States for them. I ordered some, but they're coming from China and. Uh, it'll probably be at least a month before they get here, and obviously I don't want the bike to be down for a month. So this is kind of a stopgap measure, but I'm actually fairly certain it's going to work fine. So I'm going to get out some cutters and uh, start tearing one of these things apart. 
Okay, I've used some side cutters and, and uh, disassembled one of these connectors. This is actually a new one right here. This is the factory one on the bike. They really look identical. Um, I don't know if, uh, dimensionally, they're definitely the same. So that's good news. Uh, I took the pre-terminated wires right here and uh, very carefully uh, pried the, uh, the, the uh, connectors apart. So I'm gonna be able to crimp these onto the bike's wiring and uh, they just snap those into the factory connector and then I'll have some new connectors. And I think that'll work just fine for us. Well, I got the new ends installed on here. I actually ended up using a dot of solder right here because uh, I was afraid of prying the uh, conductor part of the crimp too far open. I was pretty sure I was gonna break it. So basically I just put the wires into position um, just to float a little tiny bit of solder there, made sure it didn't work its way up into the uh, contact part. But I think it's gonna work pretty good. Let's see if our Connector snaps back on there properly. All right, it isn't perfect, but it's pretty good. You get this lock put in here. This just basically locks the uh, lock tabs down. There we go. All right, job's finished. I'll plug it in and uh, see if that charging system holds a steady voltage now. Mission success. Uh, as you saw, after I started the bike up, it jumped right up there to, you know, 13.9, 14 volts, and it stayed there. Uh, so we've definitely identified and solved our problem. Uh, I feel pretty good about that repair. You know, that connector lasted, uh, you know, 12, 13 years the way it was. Uh, the repair that I did should probably last at least that long. Uh, in uh, in my research and trying to figure out what, uh, what kind of connector that was, I did discover uh, people are calling it the free power mod and basically what you do is you bypass that connector you run a wire directly from the regulator back to the positive terminal on the battery uh, completely eliminates that connector as a potential problem source so clearly i'm not the first person to have run into this it would actually be a lot easier than what i did because uh, it saves you monkeying around with that connector disassembling that and crimping the ends on there and everything but um, at least for myself i like to whenever possible leave the factory connectors and everything in place so uh, anytime you splice into wiring you uh, introduce the possibility for corrosion and everything so um, yeah no problem with doing the free power mod i chose to leave everything factory in place it's definitely fixed thanks for following along guys we'll catch you on the next one